after a recent post I did about the different grips that you use for different shots on the tennis court, I thought it'd be good to put into a bit of context as to how you can practice at home. So these next few tips will hopefully be good for you whether you're looking to move on to a different grip for a certain shot or whether you're just trying to become a bit quicker with those grip changes. One of the main reasons you need to play with the correct grip is because when you make contact with the tennis ball, you need your wrist to be in a comfortable position. This will help to have efficiency in your swing, but also to um, stop any injuries from happening. So the most common thing we see in club level tennis is people with the wrong grip having to manipulate their wrist when they get to the ball. Obviously, as soon as you turn your wrist when you make contact, there's a big risk that the ball's gonna shoot out the back of the court or go into the bottom of the net. Having the correct grip on a shot will make sure that you've got a nice flat contact point with a comfortable wrist position so that you can repeat the same swing time and time again. So the best way to practice your grip, whether it be a new grip or an existing grip uh, from home, is to get yourself into the grip. So I'm going to do some forehands. I use the semi-western grip, so my knuckles on the fourth pedal, pedal and um, just do some shadow swings. Now start off slowly and really emphasise your contact point. So smooth swing for contact, freeze of contact, and then follow through just to make sure that your wrist is in a comfortable position, your contact point is out in front of you, and follow through. Once you're comfortable with that contact point, go into a normal swing, and gradually increase the speed of that swing. and then change to your backhand grip. Now, if you're single-handed backhand, you'll want your knuckle nearer to level number one on here. If you're a double-handed backhand, you may want it closer to chopper grip, level number two. I've got a double-handed backhand, so again, slowly freeze a contact point, follow through, making sure that your wrist is in a nice, comfortable position, contact point out in front of you. Once you've got that contact point right, then you can have a smoother swing and gradually increase the speed. Once you're comfortable with your forehand grip and your backhand grip, the next stage is learning to change your grip. Now, this is where you need to make most of your spare hand. Now, if you've got a single-handed backhand, most players tend to hold the neck of the racket here. If you've got a double-handed backhand, you'll be holding the grip. Again, like I said, I've got a double-handed backhand, so I'll be changing my grip using my left hand from forehand to backhand, forehand to backhand. A single-hander would be going from forehand to backhand, forehand to backhand. You can see that it's my left hand that's turning the racket and my right hand, which is gripping. Okay. So to practice the grip change, simply go for three forehands followed by three backhands. So forehand grip, one, two, three, grip change, backhand grip, one, two, three, okay, we're going to increase the frequency now, so every two shots, forehand grip, one, two, backhand grip, one, two, now every shot, forehand, grip change, backhand, grip change, forehand, grip change, backhand, Final progression is we're going to try to change the grip during the take back. So we're actually preparing the racket a lot earlier than we were before. So as I take the racket back, that's when I turn into my forehand grip. I'm going to go to the backhand side. You can see my racket is turning in my hand as the racket goes back. So we've got forehand grip on the take back, backhand grip on the take back, forehand grip on the take back, backhand grip. Have a go at these and good luck.